So in this video, we'll be talking about how you can remove the green background when you're trying to do a green screen based effect. So basically, we're keying out the background specifically. And if you don't already know, of course, the color why you use green for green screens is it's a rather unnatural color to use in videos. People don't generally wear green shirts and you wouldn't find green as a color on people's bodies. So it makes it a good color to remove if you are filming in a studio or something. So let's go over to the color page. And just so you know, there's actually many places where you can do this kind of effect in Resolve, but we can show the workflow, but we'll show the workflow for doing it. But this video will show the, but we'll show the workflow for doing it on the color page. So we have our clip here selected and you can also see uh, right here on the right, which is actually underneath on video track one, we have a random background clip that we're going to take the video track to green screened woman and have showing as the background in place of this green screen. So one of the best tools we can use for keying out a specific color is going to be the qualifier tool. So right here, we can use the default selected tool, the picker to select a color that we want to adjust for one of our color page effects. Just so you know, this could be things like using the color wheels if you want to target a specific color to adjust, or you can use other tools like the color curves or the color warper, which is new to DaVinci Resolve 17. You have a lot of options for adjusting how your video looks on the color page. So we just take the picker tool and we go up where we have the color we want to select and we left click. So now you can see with the corrector node on the right here, it has a pretty good selection of the green background. You can see it looks a little bit staticky because our selection isn't great for the background. So we'll need to adjust it a little bit. But what we're going to want to do is to change what the alpha output of our clip here is. So to change the alpha output, we need something for this corrector node alpha channel to connect to. So I'm going to right click on the node section and do add alpha output. So we can see now there's a new output for the alpha channel here. Let's connect the corrector node to this. And now what you can see is uh, whatever is showing in this corrector node is going to be the new output and everything else has been selected out. But what we actually want to happen is that all of this green goes away, not the person. So on the keying tab, we are going to want to inverse that. So I'm going to hit matte mask. So on the keying tab, we're going to want to inverse that. In this case, we want to hit the key output down here, this little icon here to invert it. And so we have the start of our result there. We can definitely see the underlying background coming through, but it is way too green. That won't do. So let's go back to the qualifier tab and we will adjust this a bit more. So we have a few options here for what we want to do. I'm going to click on the enhanced viewer so that we can see our video a lot more closely. The first thing I'm going to try to do is add to this selection. So we can use this tool over here, picker add to add extra colors to the selection. So you can see that these actually operate on bars here. So adding colors is going to expand this bar. So let's get the other shades of green here. I'm going to try to left click right here and that will help us remove a bunch more. But this is only going to take us so far. So we have these matte finesse options to help clean up the image after we have a reasonable selection. So one of the options here that's really going to help us clean up these random outliers over here is going to be clean white. So let's go ahead and take this and shift it to the right. And we should see most of this stuff over here kind of disappear. Yeah, let's just shift this to the right until something happens that isn't preferable, actually. Okay, we can just kind of keep going with this. Uh, okay, so at some point, you may get to the point where it actually starts to pull from the clothes or the skin of the person you're trying to keep in the green screen. So uh, at that point, you probably don't want to go further with your clean white. So let's leave that at uh, 45 here, which is already pretty high. Now we can work on this green over here. To handle this, maybe we can try using the picker add. We could get a little bit of a darker green here? I assume so. Okay, so that added a bunch to the luminance bar over here. You see how it expanded a bunch. If I hit Control Z, you can see it's a shorter range. But as soon as I click in here, we get those darker ranges. So uh, if we'd rather not use the uh, picker tool here, we could also manually adjust this. So if we pull this down, we can see if we can get all of the greens without having other selections. Maybe we 
change the saturation here a little bit. What we're trying to avoid is removing any of the person's body while getting rid of all the green. So it's kind of a balancing act because if you pull your colors too far, like the oh god, like that for instance, uh, you may pull from some of the other colors. So we just want this green range here. I'll expand the green range and that's going to help us out quite a lot here. So we just need to work on this just a tad more. Let's adjust the colors until we can get rid of as much green as possible. Okay, looks like we need a little bit of saturation here to get rid of that. So if we pull the saturation all the way to the left, okay, maybe if we lower the colors at the top. No, no, too much. Okay, just to show here, um, I'm going to intentionally increase the hue on the right too far. There's also a minus selection picker here. So pick or subtract, and we can go up here to the hair, left click on an area where the hair should obviously be, left click that, and then that's going to add back the hair color till it's basically all there. But now once again, there's a little bit more green, so we may just need to keep it adjusting this. We can go over to the edit page, take a look at it again, see if that's going to be good. So it's definitely not perfect here. You can tell it was green screened in the background. When you have a lot of hair, it can be a little tricky, but it's not too bad so far. So we'll give it a little bit more of a shot. So if we expand the range here, we might be able to, we just have to be careful when we're working here that none or as little as possible of the body gets removed. Let's hit play. Okay, so it's almost good, but over here on the right now, a little bit of the coat is getting removed. So um, once again, I want to reemphasize it's a balancing act, and it does take a little while to get right. So let's try a minus selection on the area over here. Okay, that was way too much. If we shift the saturation in a little bit. So to kind of clean up this area down here, and the little gaps in the hair, you can see it looks a little too sharp. I do think some of that got removed. We can try increasing the denoise, which does kind of blur it a little bit, but it might give us a better looking end result. 15 or so on the denoise. I think we can get a better end result than having this set to zero. So we'll try that. Let's kind of fit this to the screen. Hit play. One other thing we could try here would be to decrease the in out ratio, bring back a little bit of the outline. You might see a little bit of the green come back, kind of looking at it right here. Okay, one other little adjustment we could make here. If we zoom in, we can still see a little bit of green on this hair. So why don't we try going over to the color warper tools and we can target the green specifically. So uh, you'll see around this web that there are pins that control the hue and the saturation for your colors inside of this image. So each of the pins are basically gonna control one type of color. So if we click on the pin in the bottom left-hand corner, the green one, we can actually shift that all the way inwards, which is going to desaturate it as I bring it closer to this middle point of zero. So if we look at the green right here, we can see it's kind of colorful right now. If I bring this all the way out, it gets more colorful. But if we bring this all the way to the center, the green's gonna be almost completely desaturated. And that I think is going to give us a better look because the point is to make the green screen as unobvious as possible. So making it desaturated, it's going to make it blend in more with the hair itself. Once again, making our effect look a little better. So if we go back to the start now on the edit page, we hit play. It's decent. I would say it still needs a little bit of work. Too much of the sweater is getting cut off there and a little bit of the hair as well. So once again, back on the edit page, let's play around with it. Let's adjust it a little bit until we get it where it needs to be. Let's find that moment where there is a lot of this sweater getting cut off. I would say one of our better options here was probably to increase the denoise a bit. Doing this is going to kind of blur the edges a little bit, unfortunately, but if you compare that to having part of your clothing missing, I think it's much better for it to look full in the in the final shot. So with that added back in, we can go here, hit play one more time, watch how it looks. So in this case, we have most of the green gone. The body is still intact. And that's what you're trying to achieve with your green screen. So depending on the quality of how the original green screen was done, uh, pulling this kind of effect off is going to be easier or harder. So at this point, I would say that we have our green screen keyed out pretty decently. We've removed most of the green and we kept the body intact for the most part. And those are the two things we're really looking for when we're trying to remove the green screen. The difficulty of pulling off a green screen effect is going to depend a lot on 
how well the original green screen was recorded. So if the green color is completely even in the background and there aren't a lot of shadowy greens and really bright greens, but it's all one consistent color, then that is going to make it a lot easier when you're using tools like the qualifier on the color tab, because then you only need to target one tiny range of green and that means less accidental colors that you'll be removing from everything else. But in a nutshell, that's pretty much how you can remove green screens from your video clips on the color page.